Hey everybody, Joel here. Uh, welcome to another video addition to our series that's going to be called Is It in the Bible? Uh, we're going to be talking about a concept known as the Rainbow Bridge. You may have heard of this, maybe not. Uh, what is it? It is some place that people have made up that is kind of this in-between from life on earth to life in heaven for their pets. There is a poem. I'll read just the first couple lines for you. There is a bridge connecting heaven and earth. It is called the Rainbow Bridge because of all its beautiful colors. Now, the reality of this made up farce is it actually resembles the Norse, Norse mythology of the Bifrost that you see in Thor, you know, the Avengers, all that stuff. Um, there is no biblical basis for this, though. What I want to point us to, though, is that there are warnings in the Bible about adding to God's word. In Revelation, there's a warning in chapter 22, verses 18 through 19, not to add to the words of that book of prophecy, referring to Revelation. In Deuteronomy 4.2, uh, God says, You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Proverbs 36 says, Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. And there are warnings also in the New Testament that tell us to avoid false teachings, um, all sorts of warnings about false teachers in general, and to expose darkness, expose lies, things of that nature. Uh, 1 Timothy has multiple things about avoiding myths and endless genealogies, things that promote speculations rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. That's from 1 Timothy 1, 3 through 4. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 7 says, Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, Train yourself for godliness. In 2 Timothy 4, uh, verse 4 says that these people who are choosing teachers to please their itching ears, it says uh, they will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Why is this dangerous? Well, at the, the core of the Rainbow Bridge, is it is a lie. And lies have no place um, in the practice of Christians. We should not be lying. In fact, that's one of the Ten Commandments. You shall not lie. Um, the other deceit that is there is that this is used as a form of comfort for people who are grieving the loss of a pet. Uh, our, our comfort and our hope is not in our pets. Um, whether or not they go to heaven should not be where your hope and comfort is. Your hope should be in Christ alone. Um, if not for the forgiveness of sins, we would have no hope. Uh, but that is to say that we can sympathize with one another. Obviously, losing a pet is a very sad thing, but there is no indication in the entirety of the Bible that animals have a soul. The only reference to having a soul comes from humans. And it, when the gospel is preached, it's only in uh, reference to humans, never animals. But if you are a pet lover, there is a little hope. In Isaiah chapter 65, we see um, that it is talking about the new heavens and the new earth that will be made. Uh, you can also read about this in Revelation. Uh, it starts out, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. So we must remember things like this. The former things, the former life that we have here on the earth now as we see it, we won't even remember it. It won't even come into our minds. What you, what you have to remember is in heaven, we're going to be in the presence of God Almighty 24-7, you know, at all times, we're going to be in the majesty of God. We won't care about the life we left. We, it just won't even enter our minds. And then more encouragement from Isaiah 65 down at the bottom, uh, verse 25. 
It says, The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Now, <clears throat> you know, just reading that, it does sound like in heaven there will be animals, and they will uh, be able to live peacefully with one another. They won't be hunting each other, killing each other. Uh, so the Bible does not give any indication of our pets being there. They're certainly, you know, they don't have souls, so there's really no way for them to be saved. But it does seem very clear that God's going to create animals in the new earth as well. And then here is the final hope. We might bear a lot of pain here on earth as we lose uh, family members. Maybe you've lost a child, uh, maybe just a pet. But one day in Revelation 21.4, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Remember again, as in Isaiah 65, the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. We will have no more sadness, no more tears. Let us put our hope not on things that we grow attached to here on earth as it is now, but only to put our hope in Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, and may he be blessed forevermore. I hope this has helped you um, understand this a little better. Please avoid myths of any kind. Uh, just stay away from all the, you know, the, the random little things that get thrown into church culture. Let's have nothing to do with them and only preach the um, unaltered word of God. Until next time, God bless and be at peace.